What's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you how to add SSH keys to new or existing droplets with DigitalOcean. And for those of you who don't know, DigitalOcean droplets are Linux-based virtual machines that run on top of virtualized hardware. Each droplet you create is a new server you can use, either standalone or as part of a larger cloud-based infrastructure. And I just made an account with DigitalOcean. Um, and as of now, you get $100 credit uh, for 60 days, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to go to Create here and create a droplet. We'll do a Ubuntu version 20.04. Sounds good. I'll definitely be good with the basic plan. Regular with SSD. For the cheapest here. So you can add volume. Choose a data center region. I'm in Ohio. I'll go with New York. Authentication, SSH keys, more secure authentication method. So it looks like we can add the SSH key right through here. So you get this SSH key generation command. Follow these instructions to create or add SSH keys on Linux, Mac OS, that's me, and Windows. Create a new pair if needed. Open a terminal and run the following command. So I'm on terminal here. This is usually the standard file to save it in. These, uh, this period before the SSH means it's a, a hidden file. So if you ran ls on the root user here, you would see like downloads, documents, but you would not see .ssh. You would have to do like ls and then dash a, like the all flag. I think that's what it is. Anyways. We prompted to save the name and key. Enter the file which you want to save. So that's the name of the key and that's fine. Next you'll be asked to create and confirm a passphrase for the key. Highly recommended. You'll have to enter it in twice. This will generate two files by default called ID RSA and RSA.pub. So this is the public one and that's the private key. So here I'll just hit enter. I'll do a little password here. Enter it again. Your identification has been saved in users SSH IDRSA. Your public key has been saved in dot pub key fingerprint and the random art image. So now we'll add the public key. We'll add that here. So copy and paste the contents of the pub file into the SSH key content field on the left. Yep. So we'll copy this command, paste that in here. So cat is the command 
By the way, I have a video on basic commands, which I will link to here. I'll put a link in the description as well. But cat, um, you know, shows what's in a file. And then you get the tilde, which is your home, you know, slash dot SSH folder slash IDRSA in our public key. So I hit enter. That'll display the key. And so I'll copy all of this. Paste that in here. Give it a name. Just call it DigitalOcean. And there we go. Select additional options, enable backups for sure. And monitoring IP version six, user data, all that's free, that's amazing. Metadata is a service provided to DigitalOcean droplets that allow a droplet to access data about itself. Metadata also lets you provide arbitrary user data to droplets during creation, which cloud init can consume during the droplets first boot to speed up provisioning and configuration. That sounds awesome, but nothing I need. So I'm just gonna do one droplet and I'll keep it to the default host name. Give your droplets an identifying name you'll remember them by. Okay, I'll change it. I'll go with Ubuntu droplet server. Use tags to organize and relate resources. This might be for associating different droplets and servers with each other for more of a complex infrastructure. I'm assuming, I'm not sure what that's for, but again, something I don't need. And then assign droplets to a project. This was my first default uh, project when I signed up. And then create droplet. Creating the server, got my host name there. Got my New York, one gigabyte. Okay, so this is the IP of my server. And you can still add tags, that's cool. Easily resize it. View backups, nice. Add a domain. And so now that we've added our SSH key to the server, Created the key, did that. Add your SSH key to your droplet, did that. And now we can, after you create and upload your keys, you can connect using them. So we can connect through SSH now. So DigitalOcean droplets are managed using a terminal and SSH. You need to have an SSH client and optionally an SSH key pair. So we have our public SSH key on our server and the SSH client is our terminal. So we have the client and the key pair. Clients generally authenticate either using passwords which are less secure or SSH keys which are very secure and strongly recommended which we're doing. Uh, to log into your droplet with SSH you need three pieces of information. The droplet's IP address 
which we have here. Default username on the server is typically root and the default password for that username if you aren't using SSH keys. To get the IP address, which we know how to do that. The default username is root on most operating systems. If you uploaded SSH keys to your account and chose add SSH keys upon droplet creation, you can connect to Droplet using your preferred SSH client or command line. Once you have your Droplet's IP address and username, follow the instructions for your SSH client. Using a terminal with Linux, Mac, or Windows. So once the terminal is open, enter the following SSH command. Substitute your droplet's IP address after the at. Well, I can just type that part. So I'll copy this. It's the IP to the server. And then so SSH root at Clear this SSH root at and then the IP address. And then it typically says that it can't be established. Are you sure you want to connect? Because it hasn't connected before. And you'll say yes. So it did add the IP address of the server. It did add that to the list of known hosts. And then enter the passphrase, hit enter, and there we go. We are on the droplet server. You can check out the documentation for the server. Check out the usage of memory. 73 updates can be applied immediately. About half of them are just standard security updates. And some copyright stuff. So a good command to run on a new server is the sudo apt update. And what that's going to do is download and update the package information from all the configured sources. And then you can run sudo apt upgrade to actually upgrade them. It lets you know that after this operation, 180 megabytes of additional disk space will be used. Do you want to continue? Yes. This could take anywhere from 30 seconds to 30 weeks. And then sometimes you'll get this, a package configuration this configuration file is available, but the version installed currently has been locally modified. What do you want to do about modified configuration file sshd config? And for these, I like to keep the local version currently installed. So you can just hit enter. User so that's getting our server all set up. And I'll leave it there for now. I'll also make a video where we install Apache on here. Ubuntu is more of like a server operating system. Uh, you first install it on your hardware and then you can install Apache packages to run an Apache web server. 
so it can then serve web pages to the client, like your browser. So if you want to go to website.com, this sits on the website server, like slash var slash HTML slash, you know, website directory. And then Apache is set up and runs its service in the background. And you point your browser to website.com. And this request goes to the website server where Apache listens to it and sends the web page back to the browser. Oh, and by the way, to get out of the server, you can just type exit. And I'm back on my local machine. I'll clear that. And we can easily reconnect to the server by running SSH root at the IP address. Enter your password here. And connected. So we'll also make a video on how to transfer files to droplets with FileZilla so that we can put files onto our server. So stay tuned for that. Feel free to like and subscribe, drop a comment and say what's up, and thank you very much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Check it, check it.